And uh, I would like now to uh, invite Tobias Norhan, whom I know from many, many years, and uh, we worked together even for many years as well in the past, also on, on the back in the lens, in fact, in order to, uh, he, will, he always has very innovative uh, presentations and he has uh, innovative minds. So I think that he, again, will surprise us and I'm looking forward uh, to see his presentation. Hello, I'm Tobias Neuern from Munich in Germany. Thank you for the kind invitation to the SOA webinar series. Today, I would like to discuss with you the importance of respecting the crystalline lens apex centration in cataract, especially lens refractive surgery, as well as a clear lens exchange with the newer, high sophisticated EDOF, as well as trifocal or premium IOLs. In corneal refractive surgery, we have learned in the past 30 years that the angle kappa, that is the angle between the pupillary axis and the visual axis, is important for the treatment. Nevertheless, it is also good to know that the visual axis is a theoretical axis defined as the line connecting the fixation point with the foveola, passing through the two noidal points of the eye. Things to know when dealing with these new premium IOLs. We have also learned that the angle alpha needs to be considered. That is the angle between the optical axis and the visual axis. The short mu is the two-dimensional distance between the center of the pupil and the subject fixated coaxially sighted corneal red leaflex. In this graph, you easily can see that the visual axis does not correspond with the optical axis. I will tilt only a small decentration will have a huge influence in the amount of angle alpha. Because in every eye there is already an angle alpha naturally. And we must not change it with our surgical tech, uh, procedure. We have also learned that in the past years there is an individual optic disc phobia angle. And this angle is influenced by the amazing anatomical construction of the whole globe after birth. Here we see this angle of each eye of the same person, and that is different. So eyes are not twins. As we say, eyes are best siblings or brother and sister. And why is this angle so important for the lens surgery? because we shall not change this natural angle or our individual visual axis. Otherwise, we have to tell the patient after, uh, after he is unhappy with the visual result and his, his uh, visual axis comes here, he must wait for neuroadaptation. <laughs> neuroadaptation is a fantastic expression for finishing chair time. With anterior OCT imaging, we see the individual lens tilt. Look to the precision of fixating the light in this upper image. This is something we couldn't see years ago. So today, the individual, uh, the individual lens apex with its noidal point is calculated by the intraoperative OCT. And here we see the calculation of the anterior surface of the lens, as well the posterior surface of the lens. And then is connected the meeting points of the surface calculation. And around this center of these lines, the capsulotomy is performed. So, why do we need this lens apex centration? Now here we see post results from my neighborhood. And you really can imagine 
that these patients are really unhappy with their results. Neuroadaptation uh, won't work in these cases. In the right eye, the center of the part of the diffractive lens is quite good, but the eccentric capsulorexis induces a huge tilt with a lot of halos and glare. And in the right eye, we see the decentered multifocal IOL where the patient looks through the peripheral diffractive zones. Now here's an example, but I got post femto laser apex centration. Is this, oh yes, or oh no? Because this capsulotomy looks co obvious, completely decentered. The red circle shows the dilate, dilated pupillary margin and the yellow circle shows why I would have centered the manual capsulorexis. And here we see the same case with the implanted ED of IOL. The 100% congruent margin of the capsulotomy edge proves that the apex centration really works. It is clear that every capsular back implanted IOL centers between the capsular back equator. But it's also important that the overlay of the capsulotomy is even, otherwise we get induced tilt as seen in the previous case. Here's a beautiful case with a trifocal toric IOL. A to the pupil decentered optic, but perfect centered, in the capsular back. This implant shows no change in the angle alpha. Again, the blue circle indicates a pupillary margin and the center of this pupillary margin would hit the first inner line of the diffractive optic. The yellow line indicates the capsulotomy margin and the center hits precisely the central part of this trifocal IOL thanks to the apex centration. This red arrow shows the little distance between the two centers. And the green line shows the direction of the toric IOL. Again, another example of a little nasally descenter trifocal IOLs, just to make clear. The scope for perfect centration is really small with all the new premium IOLs. And therefore we must review for our premium implants, our, let's say premium surgical techniques. So in summary, the industry provides every year more and more refined and sophisticated implants while we surgeons stay since more than 30 or 40 years with the same or less or less, the same manual technique. Lens apex centration keeps the natural tilt and angle alpha unchanged. We have to understand the refinements of implants and therefore refine our surgical technique using the high tech support which industry uh, supports to us. And remember, Thomas Neuner and myself are performing capsule rex since 1985, quite a long time. Apex centration of the lens is today the same step forward in modern cataract refractive surgery as the capsule rex technique invented by my brother was. So thank you very much for your attention. And here is up here is our Augen Clinic in Munich. Thank you. Thank you, Tobias. Uh, I, I think this is a, a, this is real uh, refined surgery for um, all of us. So I have a first question for you, and this question is: Do you think that the uh, variable centration we can get um, by with the usual way we implant trifocal lenses? Uh, provide an answer for the variability in the photic symptoms 
patients show. Uh, some patients is not disturbed by uh, photic symptoms and others are a lot. Uh, do you think this may be the reason? Roberto, thank you very much for, uh, for your question because this hits precisely the problem we see. We all do uh, a lot of trifocal lenses and we have all, we all have patients who are quite happy with the trifocal lenses. And the small group of unhappy patients, this is the group we have to focus. We all do most of the time manual capsule axis, and we estimate um, the visual axis. And okay. And then most of the time, the lens centers between the capsule back, they have a normal visual axis and it fits. Perfect, the patient is happy. But the problem is if our capsule rexis, which is manual, is a little bit uneven, and the overlay of the capsule, anterior capsule on the lens is not perfect. So then in the healing phase, um, there will develop a tilt, a different tilt to that what the patient normally had, because Nearly every human lens has a lens tilt. And if we change our own lens tilt to another tilt, that is that what we say, um, neuroadaptation. Sometimes neuroadaptation really works. And I use the same term sometimes for my patients that uh, since I use this apex centration, the Unhappy, the group of unhappy patients has become neglectable small. And, you know, in monofocal lenses, if, if the visual axis is not perfect in the center or there is a little bit tilt, that's, uh, it's not so important. But with these trifocal lenses and the uh, premium IOLs and the, we have also um, EDOF lenses, the apex centration is very, very important to become a huge group of happy patients. Thank you. And I have also another question. For I, I, I do have a victus, and so I can try and replicate your technique. For those of us who don't have a victus, do you have any, any suggestion? Is an anterior segment OCT precise enough uh, to, to give us uh, the capability to check where the lens apex is? Um, you need it in intraoperatively. Marisa, uh, Marisa uh, showed us the same technique. She has no, no victus, but she knows exactly using the, the light from her microscope to fixate the apex of the lens. And when you know the, re the different reflexes of your microscope, then you know where is the apex. And around this apex, you can do the manual caps capsulotomy or your manual capsorexis. If you have uh, victors or we have meanwhile other three, three different um, femtosecond laser who respect this lens, uh, lens apex, then you always get it better and better. But I say, what I wanted to present is, we have to take really care, high sophisticated lenses like the trifocal lenses need to have also a high sophisticated surgery. Monofocal, it's okay. If you have tilt or it's not perfect uh, overlay. Then you have happy patients, but with the trifocal lenses or the, the premium plus lenses, you have to refine your personal surgical technique, otherwise you get unhappy patients. So now we will face a challenge by intraocular lenses and not only by difficult eyes. <laughs> so this is the future. However, I do believe that we should refine our, our surgery and actually Probably the advent of femtosecond laser led us to refine surgery 
But now it's time for all of us as surgeons to refine surgery in order to implement the new and evolving intraocular lenses. So thank you, Tobias. Uh, I, and now we